in order to act intelligently, there's a lot of things you have to know about the world. And one approach is to try and tell an artificial intelligence program everything, write it out in great detail and tell it all the facts. By building a robot, we're trying to build a system which can act in the world, interact with people, and learn for itself. And our hope is that that will lead to a quicker accumulation of the sort of knowledge of what it is to act in the world so that we can have true artificial intelligence. To encourage people to interact with the robot naturally, we've built uh, the robot to look like a human and to act like a human. Cog has two eyes, microphones for ears, and a set of gyroscopes that give it a sense of balance. Each of Cog's eyes has two cameras, one that has a very wide angle peripheral field of view, and one that has a very narrow field of view, but much higher resolution. Cog has a total of 21 degrees of freedom, including two six degree of freedom arms, three degrees of freedom in the torso, three in the neck, and three in the eyes. So my area of specialty is the arms of Cog, and in keeping with the rest of the project, instead of trying to program the arms explicitly so that they I explicitly tell the arms what they should do. I've been trying to program the arms so that they respond to their environment and interact with their environment. I have the oscillators at these two joints here <coughs> and they're getting feedback about how the weight of the slinky goes from arm to arm and they're using that to coordinate the two joints. And because the system is reactive and uh, I can stop this thing and when I let go it will straight away start again into the right slinky action. Using the same program and relying on this feedback coupling between the program and its environment, it means I can perform a lot of very different tasks. So there's pendulum swinging as one. Uh, the robot can also turn cranks. So although the robot does turn the crank a little bit, the movement isn't smooth and it's somewhat jerky. But then if I switch on the system so that it is then feeling at each joint, it, it um, senses what the motion imposed by the crank is and then tunes into that. So here's a demonstration of the saccade to motion routine. What you see is Brian moves his hand around and Cog moves his eyes to look directly at his moving hand. And the way that works is we have a routine shown here and this motion information is sent to a second routine which has learned previously how to move the eyes to focus onto any target. And when it gets that data then it ends up moving the eyes to focus on Brian's moving hand. We have built a number of additional visual motor routines, such as orienting to a salient stimulus, tracking a moving object, and stabilizing the visual field using a vestibular ocular reflex. So without the vestibular ocular reflex, as I move the head around, the eyes follow the position of the head. They don't actually follow the position of the target out in the world. With the vestibular ocular reflex, the feedback from the gyroscopes controls the position of the eyes. So as I move it back and forth now, the eyes stay locked towards me. They keep tracking the target regardless of how I move the head, even when I move it quite violently. People recognize a number of different social cues um, that are very important for the way they interact. Things like eye contact um, are very important to normal human social interactions. Um, we'd like to have our robot be able to recognize these same sorts of social cues and be able to respond to them appropriately. Using models from developmental psychology and from studies of autism, we've been building systems that can utilize joint attention. The first step is finding faces. Once a face has been located, the robot saccades to the face in order to get a high resolution image of the eye. One of the mechanisms for learning in a social environment is imitation. So you'd like the robot perhaps to imitate you in what you're doing. And this is something that you see very early in children. By tracking the motion of the face, the robot can imitate head nods. The robot is only sensitive to faces, not to any moving object. The system also detects toys with faces and imitates them in the same way. <laughs> 